but uh, my Lord, I know uh, as somebody who suffered from this in the old regime where I was removed from a plane uh, uh, and brought back that I could not travel or my passport taken. Section 12 of the Constitution which refers to Article 12. Yeah, that a, a, a passport or a national identity card is not a privilege. It is, it is a right. And that read together with the fact that uh, you know, um, citizenship uh, by part, uh, I think that is Article 16. 14. No, 14. 16. A citizens by birth does not lose citizen, citizenship. And I've looked at the papers which uh, the learned uh, uh, Ms. Ondimu has produced before the court. It shows that uh, Mr. Megona was born in Kisumu. His place of birth was Kisumu. And, and therefore, all that the, uh, uh, the cabinet secretary has done does not find, find favor uh, with the law, but probably will address the court uh, at another occasion uh, on that very point. But if indeed Mr. Miguna was uh, a Canadian citizen, again, what you can see from the documents which have been supplied uh, by the prosecution is that even the Canadian High Commission was complaining about non-compliance with the law, not only the law of this country, but with the international conventions uh, to which uh, Kenya is a party. And therefore, my, my Lord, I would uh, uh, submit uh, that uh, the uh, Inspector General together with the Director of Criminal Investigations should appear before you to explain uh, because this matter is no longer to deal with, uh, with uh, uh, whether Mr. Miguna is here or not. Uh, but the more important question, have they complied with the orders of this court? And for that matter, my Lord, we we'll still insist that the Inspector General and the Director of uh, um, criminal investigations appear before your, your lordships, uh, your lordship. And then, my lord, there are also uh, provisions which the cabinet secretary really, really should be familiar with. Uh, who is a prohibited immigrant? Uh, you, you cannot be a, prohib a prohibited immigrant if you are a citizen. The constitution and the, the law does not contemplate a Kenyan by birth. Uh, being declared a prohibited uh, citizen. And the procedures for revocation of citizenship uh, made uh, spelled out clearly in the Constitution and in the law relating to, to the immigration. And in any case, as your Lordship pointed out uh, the other day, uh, the fair trial as a right is non-derogable. So Mr. Miguna must have been given, should have been given an opportunity on the basis of the allegations that were being made for him to put his case uh, so the court could make a determination as to whether or not what the prosecution is saying is true or not and whether those orders were indeed justifiable. But I just want to finish by saying, my lord, uh, this court are the protector of citizens, uh, citizens and their rights. Once we cannot find uh, safety and protection from the courts, we are opening uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the state uh, to anarchy and uh, accountability and uh, respect of the law uh, will lose uh, its uh, mandatory requirements. Uh, it is in the 16th century, I think, or 15th, when Louis the 14th said, "Let us moi, I am the state." <laughs> Nobody can can be the state. The people of Kenya are the state, and, and all powers are delegated 
uh, to uh, various institutions of, of government. We can easily get there if the courts do not come in firmly and deal with errant uh, public officers. So my Lord, again, let the Inspector General appear before you. Let the Director of Criminal Investigations appear before you and give full account why they uh, took the action that they took. Delivering somebody who was a ward of the court. Uh, Mr. Maguna throughout was a ward of the court from Kajiado and he should have been treated in the manner in which the court had directed. Thank you. My Lord, the second yes. uh, counsel is Dr. Uh, Alonso Jr., Senator. Yes, sir. <coughs> Thank you, my Lord. Um, <coughs> my Lord, the position taken by the prosecutor that at some point between the time they released Mr. Miguna Miguna, the applicant, he was taken by the immigration, is nothing but a falsehood. It's a lie. It walks like a duck. It is a duck. And my Lord must find it to be a duck. Because, my Lord, you granted anticipatory bail. That means Miguna was under your custody until delivered to you. The circumstances under which Miguna ends up with the immigration, who are part of the police and part of government, is something my Lord must be tested by you. On the contempt, because my Lord, after you granted the order and they violated, the contempt of court proceedings are alive until purged. Part to the extent, my Lord, that there must be an explanation as to the reason why a court in Kajiado released Mr. Miguna Miguna and at some point he ended up in a plane on his way to Amsterdam. The public prosecutor should be extremely embarrassed that he has given you a ticket using taxpayers' money that Miguna Miguna has been transported to some place because he's not a Kenyan citizen. That process, my lord, is quasi-judicial. That process, as arriving at the conclusion of what they have given you today, that Mr. Miguna Miguna is not a Kenyan citizen, is a quasi-judicial proceeding. My lord, before the contempt is purged, you must see that process. Who made that decision? When was it made? Who sat in that meeting? And where are the minutes? That's the law. But more importantly, my Lord, I'm glad that I'm appearing before you today because in 2008, a similar case like this one, Mr. Muhammad Sirat, who appeared before you as a petitioner, was deported by the Kenyan government in the middle of, your, uh, of a petition. My Lord, you stopped that petition, determined that the deportation was an attempt to circumvent that petition. And my Lord, that gentleman ended up being an MP, sitting in Parliament. Kenyan government had declared him persona non grata. That case is not any different from what has happened to Miguna Miguna. And why is that so? Mr. Miguna Miguna, my Lord, was cleared to contest as a governor in Nairobi under Article 99. Mr. Miguna Miguna would not have been a voter if he was not a citizen. When did they realize he's not a citizen? All these things, my Lord, is part of the content, is part of finding a way to circumvent appearing before. My Lord, you should not allow that to happen. Before they come, stand there on oath and tell you, my Lord, how they ended up circumventing your order. Because the process of deporting any person, whether it's a Kenyan or non-citizen, is also part of the Kenyan law, and that person must appear before the court. That is what the Constitution says. And therefore, my Lord, if there's ever been a, a definition of travesty of justice today and yesterday is where that definition fits squarely. If there's ever been a scurrilous abuse of court process, my Lord, this is one instance. And if we cannot put an end to this, 
if we cannot dot the I's and cross the T's about violation of the principles under the fundamental rights my not, we might as well pack the Constitution of Kenya in a shelf and start using scrolls or something. But as long as, my lord, you're sitting here, take an oath to protect the Constitution, whether Miguna is in Amsterdam, whether Miguna is in Montreal, whether Miguna is under the sea, my lord, you can issue an oath. That is our position. Because his fundamental rights have been violated, whether under the sea or anywhere else. My lord, so therefore, they must appear before you to show cause. And if they don't show cause, my lord, you can issue an order, uh, my lord, for an explanation and to bring back Miguna and Miguna back to the country. But before that, my lord, please summon them again to come before you. Thank you. My, my lord, uh, I'll be very brief. My lord, this is a clear case where the respondents are abusing not only the administrative power, but also judicial power. My Lord, I say this because uh, this debacle commenced with the court order that was issued by the Chief Magistrate on the 1st of February 2018. It is on the basis of that order that the respondents proceeded to the house of Meguna Meguna, blew the entire gate, blew the entire front door, and seized him. Now, when this action was being undertaken, it was being undertaken on the suspicion by the police that Meguna Meguna was keeping weapons in his house and he was also keeping documents that are intended to subvert the course of justice and to undermine the authority of the government of the Republic of Kenya. Lord, uh, there has been no return filed in those miscellaneous proceedings <coughs> to indicate what, if any, the police recovered from that raid. Lord, uh, fast forward until yesterday Meguna was in the custody of the court. It, it cannot lie in the mouth of the respondents to say that at one point in time they lost custody of Meguna Meguna. Because, my lord, you remember all of us waited here until yesterday at about 7 p.m. And all indicators were that he was in the custody of the police. Yet, in actual fact, if you are to look at these documents now presented, it will appear that the court was being kept here in waiting as another parallel process was being undertaken, court in court to deport Meguna. My Lord, uh, as my learned senior has indicated, we'll interrogate the so-called deportation at uh, another forum. But uh, the documents that have been produced by my learned colleague from the DPP confirm that Meguna Meguna holds a Kenyan passport. So, my lord, to that extent and that extent only, Meguna Meguna still remains a subject matter of these proceedings. It is therefore my humble submission, as has been said by my colleagues, that over and above demanding the personal presence of the IG and the DCI, they still have to produce Meguna Meguna, because Meguna Meguna is still the subject matter of this court. Yes. Well, my next counsel is uh, Mr. Senator Tula Kilos. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, I'm from Better. Yeah, it is. Yes. 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 Standing here this morning, in as much as this matter is always about the rights of the person that we are representing. Doesn't it make us a bit apprehensive that laws are not being, orders are not being followed anymore? And if they're not being followed anymore, and you have given this order, and this being the fourth order, isn't this egg being thrown in the face? Aren't we getting splattered? Do, do we then feel comfortable that we can come to court and ask for orders? And if then the orders are not followed, then why, the question is, why do we come? And, and my Lord, 
the police in this matter, and, and I must just say this, and without any fear, without embarrassment, they are testing you. They want to see what kind of limit you can reach. Because if they tell them, please appear before me, they don't do that. What goes in, in their mind? They must be discussing and saying, Ula na tuita tu, tu skaende, atafanya nini. And then when nothing happens, they will come back again and say, ana tuita ita tu, we end up, somebody else is sent. My, my lord, this is when you need to show your teeth. Please bite somebody. <laughs> bite somebody and bite very hard. You don't let go. <laughs> And when I say bite somebody, at least you have got two people that you call who must, who are supposed to appear today. Two of them, and they have sent somebody else. If that person is in court here today, start with that one. That is the one you bite first. <laughs> because he must be able, when he comes to court, to also take the consequences. Let, let, let him not come here and come and tell you later on, watch an end because when they go back there, they sit in a conference and laugh and think, what do we do next? That is not what they need to do. They need to say, first of all, this is an order. Let us obey and see what comes next. My Lord, I do not want to be embarrassed to be a lawyer today. But isn't it embarrassing? My Lord, bite. That is what I'm asking you to do. Please bite very hard. Use the molars, incisors, the canines, but bite. That is what I'm asking. Yes, my Lord. <clears throat> the lost sight of Kenya is deeply concerned at the height of impunity being shown and demonstrated to the court uh, by the respondents. in terms of suggesting that the court means nothing to them. You have, perhaps before I go through the orders that you have given, remember that these respondents, the police, used the court to obtain legal authority to commit crime. They went to the subordinate court under Ms. Lina's application got an order for entry and break-in. Actually, it was to gain access and search, but they went to destroy property. Like my last colleague, Mr. Javier said, they have not returned that warrant to the court to explain to the court what they did and whether they arrested anyone. Then, they came to, the applicant came to court and obtained bail and even paid for it. The police refused to obey that order. You subsequently ordered them to come. Two, three times they have failed to come. What they are showing you, my Lord, is not disrespect to Miguna Miguna. They are not slighting Miguna Miguna. They are slighting you. They are slighting the judiciary as a whole. I do recall, my Lord, not too long ago, when politicians in the highest echelons of society were attacking the judiciary viciously, the Chief Justice, His Lordship Maraga, suggested in a public statement that if they don't like the judiciary, amend the Constitution and scrap it. They have chosen the easier way. They don't want to amend the Constitution, but they are scrapping the judiciary in terms of disobeying orders that are issued by the judiciary. More important orders made by the court. I join colleagues in saying the contempt has to be purged by all the officers you named and go uh, at a later stage in probably different proceedings we would like to see Mr. or Dr. Matiangi has signed off as Fred Matiangi PhD EGH, Cabinet Secretary. We will be dealing with him to show him that he doesn't even have power to sign the document he has signed because in the government he's serving, he has not been sworn as a Cabinet Secretary for Interior. 
<laughs> so he has no power that he's pretending to. If you look at the section he is citing, that was cited by my friend Dan Kanondimu, section 33 deals with prohibited immigrants. There is a process to having a person declared as a prohibited immigrant. Section 43 gives the cabinet secretary power to make these orders upon recommendation from some authority or a tribunal. It can't be that they investigated yesterday on 6th, they took Gunas papers to him, and then he signs. There is a tribunal that ought to have been uh, the subject of some proceeding, which he will be telling us at that stage. So my Lord, the illegalities that have been committed are undermining the authority of this court and telling us the rule of law means nothing except when you are in government. We must stop them in their tracks. I joined Mr. Umbeta in saying, bite really hard. Yesterday, I suggested the same thing, that the representatives who came to court ought to have been detained until Mr. Boynet and Mr. Kinoti came to court with Miguna Miguna. It is even shameful, my lord, that they would lie to you personally. Remember, before you had joined after your ruling in the afternoon, you said you had been assured Mr. Miguna Miguna is in court and he'll be released. That was actually in court. You see, it is so shameful that they can taunt you in your face and say, we'll dangle Mr. Miguna here to assuage them, give them some palliative care, and then we can do what we want to do. I'm embarrassed that Mr. Ondimu, counsel whom I deeply respect, can take instructions of falsehoods and be sent here to present to be a messenger. Yeah, I think, uh, my lord, I think, uh, my colleague, uh, I have not, none of the senior colleagues here has gone into my person. All advocates here act on instructions. If those are my instructions, let him reply to my instructions. Not saying that he's embarrassed by him. I'm an advocate just like he is. I've worked with him in the private sector and, and he knows where I work. So he can't purport to know what instructions I receive. So let him stick to his instructions. Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nubli, I know in your other life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so stick to our my instructions. Account. Yes. Um, I will buy him tea when we leave. <laughs> But the point I'm making, perhaps uh, if I refer to his clients, to provide false information, false instructions to counsel. When, as counsel, even on our side, we have sworn to defend and uh, defend the truth and defend the law and justice, it is also contemptuous of them to counsel, to give him lies, to present those lies to you. So they are in contempt of the lawyer, they are in contempt of the court, and they are co in contempt of us on the other side as lawyers. Uh, they are in contempt of the, the applicant in terms of providing starkly false information to the court. But this long and short of what I'm saying, my Lord, mm -hmm. is the, the persons you named must come to court in person, purge their contempt. And part of the things they must do to pack their contempt is to present Mr. Miguna Miguna to you before in court in Nairobi, Milimani. Not to ask you to go to Ottawa or else to one look at him. They must bring him here. If they purport to uphold the law, they must know that court orders are the law. Thank you very much. My Lord, uh, I have a very brief reply. Yes. My Lord, yesterday there were two orders that the court made. The first ruling which was delivered. The first ruling which was delivered was to the effect that there was no need for the DCI and the IG to appear before court. That was then. Yeah. The second order was the effect that the DCI director and Mr. Saidi do appear before court. So it is not true that the IG was required to appear first one to the second ruling. The people who are required to appear today were the ECI and <coughs> Mr. Saidi, the officer in charge of flying school. As I have indicated, the predicament that is facing the DCI and where he is currently, it would have been impossible for him yesterday to make the arrangement 
because we all know what's going on in Bodhi Forest and the need to address that <coughs> issue. My Lord, you've been referred to by my senior colleague to, to the various orders that the, uh, the chief magistrates caught in Kajiado in here. My Lord, if my colleagues have a problem with the search warrant and whether the returns have been made, the best forum would be at the chief magistrate court to question whether the respective returns have been made and how that such warrant was executed. In regard to the orders that were made by the Kajiado court, the Kajiado court, yes, made certain orders. As to whether those orders have been obeyed, this, in my humble view, would not be the appropriate forum to address those particular issues. In respect to the issues that have been referred to the case of Mr. Siraj, I somehow handled part of the prosecution. The petition that he filed at High Court in regard to challenging the decision of the immigration department was actually dismissed. Mr. Serrat, through his advocate, my senior colleague, filed the notice of appeal. The petition was not allowed. Hey. <laughs> no, not, not, not the election petition. There was no, another petition. The petition was allowed by Justice George Lee. The petition was allowed. That's why I proceeded with the election petition. There was such an That order. is correct, my lord. That is not correct. There is a notice of appeal that was filed by him. Why would he be filing a notice of appeal at the court of appeal? And he, granted, he was granted stay orders against the criminal prosecution in Milimani court. It was a criminal prosecution, but the JR proceedings were had by just the criminal yes. were allowed. allowed. And the decision of the director of migration was quashed. My Lord, and I have that judgment. Thank you for I the also system. have two <laughs> contrary judgments. <laughs> My Lord, in that regard, <laughs> I have two contrary judgments in that. And, and it doesn't believe you. <laughs> 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 yeah. But again, this water did and before I get those decisions. Yes. Yeah. My Lord, I do have contrary decisions which I'll be relying on in my submission. I never thought this issue would arise, but I came prepared for such an issue to arise. Mm. But the legal problem is. But it's a good argument. Proceed, proceed, proceed with your response. You know your response now. Yeah. Those authorities do not cite the two decisions, they've questioned the basis under which the immigration made the deportation. You say that issue will be addressed as another problem. We are supposed to address the issue of why the orders of this court were not complied with. My Lord, the orders of this court have not been disobeyed. It's a humble salvation. No order. You've been told that you need to. The orders. One of the things is that the orders were complied with. This, the orders were directed to the DCI and OC Flying School to release Mr. Miguna Miguna. If another government department, which the DCI and Mr. Saidi do not control, take possession of this individual, you cannot blame Mr. Saidi and the DCI. The respective, the only application should be what basis did the immigration department take up this individual. If this court issues an order for the immigration department to come and explain what was the basis for them taking up the Mr. Miguna Miguna, would gladly then take up that matter and serve the immigration department on behalf of this court. But it's not the two individuals who had been directed to produce Mr. Miguna Miguna disobeyed the court. <coughs> It is not that the two agents of the government have any disrespect or anyone within the circle have any disrespect towards the court, towards the judiciary, and there is no need for this court to bite. We know courts can bite. The question you ask is, was he produced before this court? Yeah. I have no knowledge. He was required to be produced. I never saw him. I had him court. He was not produced. He, he was not physically produced before this court. At what point did the immigration department assume his custody? From who? The custody was assumed from the officer. The officers acting under Mr. Said. They were picked by immigration. The custody was taken from officers under Mr. Said, who is under the DCI, who was acting under instruction of the DCI. Is that just a stop so that I can hear you? 
don't shake your head. I'm just saying for the record, just say the instructions were given by Mr. Said so that he handed over the custody of the applicant to the immigration officer without passing through this court's custody. My Lord, the orders that court issued the first ruling, the court said, that even when the ruling was delivered, that thing, the court said that either way Mr. Miguna should be released, not necessarily brought before this court. That's what I got the ruling to me. But did the court indicate that it was going to wait, even if it was late, to receive Mr. Miguna so that he can release him? I was present in court and I actually waited in court. You waited? You waited until 7 o'clock with us. It's not you did. You did wait with us up to 7 p.m. And that's when I learned of all this, what was going on. After and I your instructions to court, your submissions, which are on record, is that you have no instructions. You are saying that the people are not communicating with you. Yeah, in fact, switched off their phones. They have switched off, even Mr. Saidi they have switched on his phone. Switched off. Off. It, it is, it's on record. I remember what I said. <laughs> But all this I learned after I had left court late at night. Okay, I've had it. My Lord, you've been asked to crucify the officer who had been sent by the DCI. The officer came and was sent by the DCI out of respect to this court, not to show that he disobeyed the court. This is merely a messenger. You do not crucify a messenger. You don't crucify a messenger. You don't bite a messenger. You receive the message and evaluate that message. That would be all. And there will be no need to bite anyone. <laughs> May I say something? One last point I forgot to mention in respect to, to the fact that the subject matter, the applicant is already out of jurisdiction and whether court can make any subsequent orders. I wish to refer to the case of Zuhura Suleiman. I'm not receiving the authorities. Okay. Most of You are supposed to have to be prosecuted. It's because the issues I no. never thought they would respond. And since it's a legal issue that arose during the reply, then I would only have cases to reply to the members. That is incorrect, my lord, because he's the one who wrote this issue, who wrote these issues.
What's the name of the director of immigration? Kialangwa.
Okay, this is my ruling. From the submission, ma from the submissions made, made, it is clear to this court that there is an obvious contempt of the orders of this court and a deliberate attempt by state agencies to subvert the rule of law in this country. Court orders, once issued, must be obeyed. For the court to make an appropriate determination on what course of action to take, it hereby directs the second and third respondents in person to swear affidavits in regard to the circumstances under which the applicant was released from their custody to the Directorate of Immigration during the subsistence of a valid court order requiring them to be produced, requiring them to produce the applicant before this court so that he can be dealt with in accordance with the law. The Director of Immigration, Major General Gordon Kihalangwa, must swear an affidavit to indicate under what circumstances he assumed custody of the applicant when he knew that he was under the custody of the court awaiting his release. The affidavits must be filed and served by Friday, the 9th, February 2018. The applicant and the interested party have a right, must be filed and served. The applicant and, and the interested party, that is the Law Society of Kenya, have a right to file uh, affidavits in response to the uh, affidavits, affidavits that shall be filed. Further, the second respondent, Mr. George Kinoti, and the third respondent, Mr. Joseph Boynet, must further swear affidavits to show cause why they should not be punished in accordance with the Contempt of Court Act for, being, for disobeying the orders of this court. They shall be required to appear in person before this court on 14th February 2018 at 9 a.m. to show cause. They have the, these proceedings are adjourned to that date. It is so ordered. <coughs> 9 a.m. Thank you very much.